In this video, we will discuss some database concepts and introduce techniques for retrieving data from a single table in a database. SQL, or Structured Query Language, is a programming language that we use to manipulate data in a database and to manipulate the data itself. DDL is data definition language, which is the language, which is the dialect, the subset of SQL that we use to create tables, delete tables, create databases, create schemas within databases, change permissions for users, create logins, and all the things that are required to support the data. DML, data manipulation language, is the part of SQL we use to retrieve information from the tables and also to insert information into the tables or make edits to existing information. There are many dialects of SQL. We are focusing on the dialect supported by Microsoft for the product called SQL Server. Microsoft and Oracle are two of the main players in the database field in which we study. MySQL is the most popular open source or free database manager. It is also owned by Oracle. They hope to sell you on their larger enterprise-wide products after they get you interested in MySQL. I use MySQL quite a bit in my research. It is widely used across the world to manage data on many different websites. Most SQL dialects are similar. If you learn the ins and outs of SQL Server, you can apply much of that to Oracle database managers and also to MySQL. So this is time well spent to learn the SQL Server SQL language because it will apply to other things that you do in your professional life. Some important terminology that is often confusing. SQL Server is a product sold by Microsoft to manage data. It lives in a closet. You'll never see it, but we will use it and we will use SQL to manipulate the data inside or stored by SQL Server. SQL is not a procedural language. That means that it's different from Java and different from C Sharp in that you tell SQL what to do and the DBMS, the Database Management System, decides how that will be done. That happens behind the scenes from you. What we will do in this class is tell the DBMS, the Database Management System, we will tell SQL Server using SQL what we want from our tables and SQL Server, SQL Server, will decide the best way to retrieve that information in the most efficient manner. Now you will study other programming languages in your IT career such as Java and C Sharp there are some concepts that are similar. SQL has variables, SQL has loops, SQL has conditional statements. But SQL is not object oriented, whereas Java and C Sharp are object oriented and also procedural. The International Standards Organization publishes a comprehensive standard for SQL. And here it is. I'm not going to test you on it. I'm not going to expect you to be fluent in it. I just want you to know that it exists. And I want you to be aware of bodies like the ISO that provide a great public service for us by standardizing the things that we do. If you're very much interested in this topic and it's something you'd like to pursue, you can get involved And you can help contribute to standards such as SQL by 
reviewing proposals to change the standard by reviewing new standards by contributing improvements finding mistakes there are many ways you can get involved and I encourage you to take a look at this website and see different ways that you can improve your professional standing it's a good resume builder it's a great way to network and it will make you much more interested in the field that you've chosen getting back to SQL again structured query language for our purposes it is not case sensitive what I would like you to do is write your reserved words in uppercase and by now you should have read the chapter you should know what a reserved word is or a keyword in this example select and from are reserved words or keywords they are recognized by the SQL language last name is a column or an attribute from a table and T employee is a table name if you wrote all of this in uppercase it would still work if you wrote all of this in lowercase it would still work referring back to SQL Server again the product somewhere in a closet on the college campus at UC Claremont is a SQL Server instance running on a computer we don't know what the computer looks like it may be a virtual machine it may be a, a solid dedicated piece of hardware we will never see it we will never get close to it we use SSMS SQL Server Management System to access the SQL Server instance now I will test you on this and it's important that you understand the difference because in a job interview you will be asked what tool did you use to access SQL Server and the worst thing you can say is I don't know the best thing you can say is SSMS make sure then that you can differentiate between these two things there are many other clients available our front end or our client SSMS is one of many that we can use to access SQL Server SQL Server is measured in instances on the computer in the closet on the UC Claremont campus there is a SQL Server instance running with this name IL-Server-001 slash MSSQL Server 2012 I installed it I gave it that name there could be multiple instances running on that server in that closet or there could be other instances on other servers to which we can connect using SSMS as you've already done you installed SSMS on your desktop or your laptop computer you found out it was free why do you think it's free it's free because Microsoft wants you to use SSMS to connect to their retail product SQL Server that way you will learn to use SQL Server and when you get a job you can recommend it to your employer by giving away the client they hope to get you interested in using their server moving on to SQL there are some popular clauses that we will address when we write some basic queries and then we'll get into more advanced clauses later select from where and order by are the clauses that you should master in this lesson other syntax that we'll touch on as it becomes necessary the star or asterisk when we want to refer to all the attributes in a table distinct when we want to make sure that every record is different from every other record in our results set we will be creating expressions such as using functions to manipulate strings and using conditional operators and relational operators 
to create where clauses and filter clauses. We will talk about the different operators available which look remarkably like C Sharp and Java in most cases. We'll talk about the concept of a null. We'll talk about the concept of fetch and top. We will emphasize as very shortly because it makes our queries and our result sets much more readable. When you're asked to write a query, it can be overwhelming. Your customer, your boss, your neighbor, your best friend has asked you to generate a result set based on the contents of one or more tables in a database. If you break it down into parts, if you look at the question you're being asked and break it down, you should be able to map the natural language question that you've been given into a SQL statement. That becomes a big part of your job as a database analyst, database manager, database programmer. Again, that natural language question that you're given, that your customer needs, has to be mapped into a syntactically correct and logically correct set of SQL statements. That is the primary focus of the course that you are in right now, is how to write those SQL statements. If you break it down and you're asked to deliver a result set, the SELECT clause tells SQL what information should be extracted from the tables, what particular columns or attributes or expressions should be in the result set. The FROM clause tells SQL what tables you want to use to extract that information. The WHERE clause tells SQL what records you want to exclude based on one or more conditions. Do you only want invoices that are over a thousand dollars? Do you only want invoices that have been paid? The order by clause tells SQL if the result set should be in alphabetical order, ascending, descending, should it be sorted by some numerical amount? And then the top distinct and fetch clauses tell SQL do you want all of the records? Do you only want the top five? Do you want all of the records? We will look at these as we go along and do some examples using SQL in the next video.